Hello there and welcome to this new tutorial from Expresso Mechanic where we'll be looking at the production of a worm gear mechanism. Quite simple to do but before we get to the animation stage I'm actually going to break this down into two separate parts because I do need to show you how I model the actual worm gear itself. So without further ado I'm going to switch to another file that I've got here and we'll start work. So what I'm going to do first, grab a hold of a helix spline just zoom out so we can see what we're doing. It's in the correct plane, but we do need to make some adjustments. Adjustments. So the start radius I would like to be 50. The same with the end radius. The end angle, I think we'll times that by 10. We've got 720 degrees in there. Let's times that by 10, make it a few more turns. That's much better. The subdivision I'm going to say 400 for, just to make it nice and smooth. That's what we need to see there. We can put a uniform spline in there, actually. Um, I quite like a uniform spline. It does help to make things a little bit smoother, I think. And certainly if you need to edit the uh, worm gear at any stage in the process, it's the better option to use. Yep, happy with that. Now, the next thing to do is actually to copy this. What I'm going to do, hold, my, hold down my command key and just drag along the Z axis there. And, and about in between the turns of the first helix, if I place it there, as you can see, I've got the, my first helix is there. I've got it just about in between the turns, dead on, dead on there. So that's what I want to see. The next thing to do is get an end side. We'll make it about seven centimeters and take it down to three sides because we want this to be a triangle. And then finally, we need to drop all of these elements into a sweep nerves. We've got the, the end side in, we'll drop both our helix objects in and there we go. Now the second helix object is a rail spline which is essential for this. If you don't do it it just doesn't work very well at all. It, 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 you're just making work for yourself actually if you don't put a, a rail spline in there. So always do that. Next thing to do, take a quick look at the sweep here. We don't want to use rail scale, take that off. Now that's already improved things vastly. Uh, if we change our view, now you can see that it's pretty good here. We've got the try that that inside is about the correct size. It's it's all pretty uniform down there, and we've got a nice uniform shape. But it's not right yet. The easy th easy thing about this though, or it's easy to sort out. What, what you've really got to do is come down to the rotation here, take a hold of these points and drag them until you get a shape that pleases you, and that's around there, which is in the y-axis here, or basically 0.41 will do nicely. The same will be true of this second point here. Drag that down in the y to 0.41, and there we have it. So we've got our, our worm gear there, and it looks very, very nice. The end side, you can do some work with if you want to. You can just make it six just to take it down there, and that's that's pretty good. I mean, I would say that that now is nigh on perfect. That's about as good as it needs to get. As you can see, everything still remains parametric, so you can always make a, a, a change here and there if you need to, just to perfect the thing even more, which is really convenient and a nice way of making these. I mean, it's not the only way to make a worm gear, but it's one of the quickest methods, and I think it gives you a really clean and nice result. And I always use this method. I mean, I always put caps and things, you know, I might put this into a into sort of a, a casing of some description. So you won't see this end part of it anyway. Um, I mean, if you needed to see the end part of, uh, of, of something like this, then obviously you're going to make the thing editable and probably play around with points and various other things and add polygons and, and, and do a heck of a lot of work just to make it actually look a little bit tidier. But uh, for our purposes here, there's really no need to whatsoever. So there you go. That's the first part of this two-part tutorial finished with. Uh, we know now how to make our worm gear. And I'll see you very shortly in the second part when we'll get this thing animated. See you soon.